gotten some practice on the product rule first. We don't want to confuse those two. Get the product rule done separately and then move on to the quotient rule. Well, if you're ready, here we go. Quotient rule, we'll find the derivatives of functions using that quotient rule. And it, remember, it's different. It's similar, but different. So you have to be very careful. And then we'll throw in a real life situation or two. The quotient rule, here we go. So you've had the constant rule, the power rule, the constant multiple rule, and the sum and difference rules, all of those to differentiate polynomial functions. Add in, excuse the pun, add in the quotient rule, and you cannot differentiate any rational function. Remember, rational means a fraction, basically. And this is what it looks like. Before I can get started, though, I need to make sure the pen's going. There we go. Check number one, check number two, we're good. All right, so here's the quotient rule. And here's my shortened version of it. Of course, the denominator can't be zero, as always. Here's the short version. So, using this, let's suppose that we had, let's say capital F of X equals that F of X over g of x. There we go. We'll work with them this time. So if we want f prime of x and capital F of x had f of x and g of x as parts of it, this is how it goes. The way I do it is I focus on the fact that we have a quotient, which means we have a denominator. And as you might expect, you would have a fraction for your derivative. And I always start with, okay, what's the denominator? Write that down first. So g of x. We're ready, already starting. Now remember a little bit about how the product rule goes. It would be g of x times f prime of x, and that's how this one starts out. But I always put the g of x in first, then the f of x with the prime, because I'm going to take the derivative of that part. Now here's where it gets different. The first difference is you're going to have a minus here instead of a plus. So take special note of this minus. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did with the power rule on the top. We'll put, take g prime of x, or the derivative of g, times f of x itself. Okay, now that looks a bit like the product rule, except there's a minus in the front. The second difference is we've got a denominator, as you might expect, and that denominator is g of x squared. So you've got two differences. You've got the minus on the top, and on the bottom, you have g of x squared. No derivative on the bottom, just g of x squared. And there you go. If you want to shorten that just a slight bit for memorization purposes, g f prime Remember, we're talking about this function right here, g f prime minus, and then g prime f over g squared. A little bit shorter. It might be easier to memorize. Remember, you've got a minus on the top, and you've got g squared on the bottom. If you can remember those two and keep it straight from the product rule, you'll be in good shape. Get some practice. Make sure that some of your practice includes going back and forth using the product rule and the quotient rule, and you'll be in good shape. But practice does make better at doing this. So get plenty of practice. All right, moving on. So 
here's our function. We called it capital F of X in a few minutes ago. And notice that you can't just take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. Do not do this. Remember, we've got a rule for it. You've got to follow the rule or you won't be getting the right derivative. So let's take a real good example here. We want an equation of the tangent line and if we're going to do that, we're going to find it at a particular point. Now this is how you have to go. We're going to, at some point inside this question, we're going to use the point slope form. Remember the one I told you to memorize? y minus y sub 1 equals m x minus x sub 1. What do we need first? Well, we need the slope. We've got the point. 1, negative 1. Good. You need the slope. How do you find the slope? The derivative to the rescue. And more to the point is since this is a rational function with a function on the top and a function on the bottom, we're going to use the quotient rule. So first of all, this is going to be the slope. We have to find out how to do this. So first of all, we're going to have a fraction. I'll just make this long enough. And I always start with the bottom. So 2 minus 3x times what? Times the derivative of the top. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to write it down. 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. And I'm going to take the derivative of that. Don't lose track of that. Now we're using the quotient rule, so this is a minus instead of a plus. Minus what? Well, we'll, we'll just reverse those roles. 2 minus 3x, good. Derivative of that, because over here we had it by itself. And second is the 2x squared minus 4x plus 3 without the prime. What's on the bottom? 2 minus 3x. What? Squared. Okay, we've got some work ahead of us. y prime equals. On the top, first of all, you got 2 minus 3x. Good, that's easy. Just copy. Take the derivative of the second part. You'll have 4x, bring that 2 out front, x to the first, minus 4 for the minus 4x, and the derivative of 3 is 0, so we'll close that out. We've just done that. Bring the minus down. Now, for the first part of this one, the derivative of 2 minus 3x is just minus 3. And we'll just copy this 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. And on the bottom, the 2 minus 3x squared. All right, what do we have now? y prime equals. On the top, very carefully, remember you're going to multiply two binomials together. So these two will give you minus 12x squared. You have 3x times negative 4 is plus 12x. You have 2 times 4x is 8x. And we've got 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And on the second part, notice you've got two minuses in a row, so we can make this plus and this plus. So 3 times 2x squared is 6x squared. 3 times the minus 4x is minus 12x. 
and 3 times 3 is 9. There's our numerator. And on the bottom, 2 minus 3x squared. All right, one more cleanup here on the top. We've got a pair of x squared terms for a minus 6x squared. Check that off and check this off. 12x minus 12x, that's 0. So we can scratch those off. And we've got minus 8 plus 9 is plus 1. There's your numerator. How about that? And in the denominator, 2 minus 3x squared. And I'm going to sneak down here and get an eraser. Get rid of that. Get back to the pen. And put the fraction bar in again. There we go. So there, oops, somehow there. Our derivative is minus 6x squared plus 1 over 2 minus 3x quantity squared. What's next? Well, remember, this is the slope for that tangent line. Where? Right here. So if I want the slope, slope equals minus 6x squared. Well, what's the x? 1. So this would be minus 6 times 1 squared is minus 6. And plus 1, that's the numerator. And the denominator, we've got 2 minus 3x. Well, x is 1, so it'll be 2 minus 3 is minus 1 squared. So this would be 1. So we've got minus 5 over 1, or minus 5. There's our slope. Now we're ready to use the point slope form. So y minus a negative 1 is y plus 1 equals slope is negative 5 x minus 1. There's our equation and we just need to clean it up a bit. y plus 1 equals minus 5x plus 5, or y equals minus 5x plus 4. Now, here comes the fun part. Grab your calculator, your TI 83 or 84, we'll assume you have an 84. Graph this equation right here. Remember, hit the y equals key. Put this function in there. And then hit graph. And then go back to y equals again. Now, put in y equals minus 5x plus 4, which is our tangent. Hit graph again. And you'll see the two will pair up very nicely as this one being the tangent of the first rational function. Pretty neat. All right, moving on. Let's see, first of all, I'm going to clear this so you can see what's going on here. Okay, so here are the slide, here are the slide parts to it. You can see up here that you've got the g, or the function in the bottom, and the derivative of what's on the top, and the minus, because it's a quotient rule. And here's the top one, and the derivative of the bottom. And on the bottom, g squared. Do the derivatives, multiply them together, and then evaluate dy dx, alias m, alias slope. All you have to do is put the x in. And 
Oops, I must have made a mistake somewhere. Slope is three. Okay, we'll follow the procedure and you can see where I made the mistake. Put those in the point slope form. You get three X minus four instead. Oops, I made a mistake, didn't I? Go back and find out where I made the mistake, maybe. When you graph those two, you should see something similar to this. Notice this is the line you found, the 3x minus 4. We found the wrong thing. And it is a nice tangent to the first rational function. Not all quotients, good news, need to be differentiated using the quotient rule. Sometimes it can be more efficient to use the constant multiple rule. Here's one example. You can rewrite this first one as one sixth times this second function. And then you can just use that one sixth as the constant, take the derivative of this, and then multiply it times the six, and you've got the derivative of that original function. Next, 5x to the fourth over 8. Sort of separate that 5 eighths. So it's 5 eighths x to the fourth. Take the derivative of x to the fourth, and the next thing you know, you've got it without using the quotient rule. Third one. Now this looks like you'd have to use the quotient rule. However, that's not quite the case. Because the first thing we can do is we can put this minus 3 sevenths out front. Like that. And so we've got this as the part that we're going to actually have to do the differentiation work on. Differentiate that. There's your 3 minus 2x, because we also canceled out the x's. Didn't, didn't show all the work. Maybe we should show, there's our negative 3 sevenths. Here's the x. And in this part right here, we can factor out an x. Like that. And then the x's cancel, and Here's your negative 3 sevenths. Here's your 3 minus 2x. All you have to do is take the derivative of 3 minus 2x. Really easy to do. Even though it looks like you're going to have to use the quotient rule. Now you could have used the quotient rule, but if you're careful and recognize some things, you don't always have to use the quotient rule. Let me clear this. Here we go. And fourth. Take that nine fifths, leave that out front. Make this one over x squared. There's our five ninths, one over x squared. So you can leave this nine fifths out front. Rewrite this 1 over x squared so we can use the power rule and take the derivative of x to the minus 2. There's your derivative and a little bit of cleanup work. And we're finished. Last of all, an application. A bit of a medical one this time. What you've got is P, and P represents the systolic blood pressure. Now, a little bit of personal note here. My blood pressure is usually 110 over 70, roughly speaking. The systolic is this upper number. That's the point. So to get this upper number, and how it changes as the blood goes through the body. 
So the blood's leaving, let's see, it's leaving here, and it's going down there and up here. Five seconds after it leaves the heart, what's the pressure? Well, if we, if we take this time and just put it in there, we could find out what the pressure is. But what we want to know is how is the blood pressure changing five seconds after it leaves the heart? The changing changes things. We're using a bit of calculus. And if you take a look at this expression for P, the systolic blood pressure, we're going to need the quotient rule. For this one, there is no sneaky way of getting around it. You will have to use the quotient rule. But here we go. Quotient rule. We've got a function on the top. We've got a function on the bottom. So our derivative, or how the blood pressure is changing with respect to time, here's our, remember, always start with the one, the function on the bottom, the derivative of what's on the top, and then reverse the roles. Here's what's on the top, and here's the derivative of what's on the bottom. Square what's on the bottom, and don't forget, minus, not a plus, like with a product rule. Expand that, combine similar terms, and simplify. And there you've got your expression for how the blood pressure is changing at any particular time after it leaves the heart. All we need to do is put the 5 in for the T and evaluate it using our calculator. And that's how it's dropping five seconds after the blood leaves the heart. Well, I hope you learned a lot from this. And you can keep the product rule and the quotient rule separate. Keep in mind some of those tricks that sometimes you can do so you don't have to use the quotient rule all the time. Just be careful, and I'll see you next time when we'll move on to section 6.5 and we'll pick up some more skills. In the meantime, get plenty of practice. Don't let too many days go by between practice sessions. You don't want that good skill that you've accomplished to slip away. Until later, take care.